and welcome back to White Claw Wednesday, episode number 68. And it's going to be a very special episode today because we have our first ever digital guest coming in over Skype. And it's Jacob Martinez, my best friend. I've known him since well before I could form thoughts. So let's cheers to that. Crack open our claws. Welcome aboard. All right. Of course. All right. Digital cheers up. Cheers. cheers up. We'll pray to the audio gods. Oh, yeah. So we decided to have Jacob on because, well, first of all, he's been our pretty much our number one fan since we started. Definitely. Uh, number one listener, know, for leaving, sure. Yeah. Leaving comments, <laughs> you know, helping the algorithm on YouTube, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and uh, we wanted to bring him Playing the game. Exactly. Because we are all huge Marvel nerds, you know, MCU fans, all that kind of stuff. And the Falcon and the Winter Soldier just finished streaming episode six just came out on friday and uh yeah we're pretty much going to give you our thoughts because ryan and i have been saving we've been holding in all our you know it's discussions for the show it's been yeah hard. because we we decided because with wandavision we kind of just were kind of all over the place but we decided to really just kind of dedicate this episode to the to the series and what what our thoughts are on it so jacob how about you you take us you take us away with with your start with some of your thoughts Okay, well, I mean, the series as a whole was really, really enjoyable. Like, I didn't think I would have that much fun watching the couple of Captain America buddies just running around causing havoc and <laughs> whatnot. But they definitely just are trying a lot of new things. And I think I really appreciate that from, from Marvel, especially with like the, the pandemic and like everything going on. It feels like they're, um, but I, I have like, very minimal complaints. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well, Frank, Ryan, what are your overall okay. thoughts? Uh, I mean, I was really, really happy with the outcome of the show. Um, I really, it, it, it brought me to tears. It really did. Um, I don't know why I've been getting like more into my emotions lately and superhero movies just do it for me. And so it, it was really an emotional roller coaster. And I thought there was a lot of good, uh, you know, morals and, and stuff like that behind the storytelling. And, Personally, I, I've never read the comics. Like, I, I didn't know. I mean, I knew the outcome because of, like, all, like, the, you know, I guess, internet uh, spoilers out there. Um, yeah. You know, just from people who already know the comics, and they're like, yeah, this is what's going to happen. Um, but for me, like, I had never read the comics, and so this was just all somewhat fresh. And so it was really great to just see, like, the, the direction it's moving in and and the character development being done. Um so I, I really enjoyed it. I did have a few nitpicky things. I, I think you'd be... So we'll get into them later. Yeah, I think you'd be surprised at just how much like source material they used from the comics. Like the whole storyline of Isaiah Bradley, the whole uh, the literal suit that Falcon or I guess Captain America has at the end. It's like a one-for-one one take uh-huh. from the comics. And um, I guess for people that read the comics, it was very, very satisfying to see that stuff come to life. And then for people that don't read the comics, it's like, dang, that shit looks dope. (laughs) Right, right. Mm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you know, I I like that you mentioned that whole not reading the comics, Ryan, because Uh I also haven't really read the comics in a, like, I own a few comics, but I just, I just, like, maybe five or six total comic books. That's how many comic books I own. And when you think about how many comic books there have been, that is such, like, a just... It's basically you imagine a beach and then you think about, oh, the sand at this beach, it's a bunch of little mini rocks, you know? Basically, the comic books I own in my possession is pretty much like one little tiny sand rock <laughs> so at a beach. School. Like yeah. that, I own it, two. Exactly. And they're not even Marvel. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, but, so, but, but the great thing about YouTube is, the great thing about YouTube is it's, it's filled with people who have not only read basically the whole you know beaches sands worth mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. comics but they are much older than me and have just been around for like more of the golden age of comics when there weren't all these movies so it was pretty much you know if you're a comic book fan you're reading the actual comic books and they all have these different youtube channels where they just know everything and they make these videos that just educate those who don't read the comics and they give them 
a pretty right good knowledge yeah. level yeah. of someone who would have read mm-hmm. the comics you know so that's why like i a lot of beats that happen in these movies and these tv shows you know i see about 50 percent of them coming because i watch these videos that tell me what the comics you know say so that that's how i get my answers so i, I really read about as much comic book material as you but it's just you know the youtube yeah is there's just, always that's somebody that's, that's dove in dive dove way deeper into it than <laughs> like we ever could yeah Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So and, uh, that's like that's how I knew. Like one of the obviously spoilers coming up for this. Yeah, for I was just about to preface that, it. right? <laughs> just spoilers. Because I was I was gonna drop a huge one in that. Power broker is uh, Sharon Carter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Peggy Peggy Carter's niece, and uh, that right there is a prime example of something that I felt like could have been a surprise to me had I not been watching you know, the Mr. Sunday movies, YouTube channel, pretty much breaking down every episode as it came out. Cause mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. since they know their comic book stuff, they're making these predictions that are usually very accurate. And one of their predictions was, Oh, we think Sharon Carter is going to be the power broker, which by the way, I kind of dig for her character just because it feels so opposite from Peggy Carter. What are you guys? It's funny on that, that you, that you say that. Cause I f- kind of feel the opposite. And, um, yeah. it's funny that you brought up Mr. Sunday movies as well, because after the, I watched, the episode from Friday, I was kind of like, mm, I'm not sure I like where they're taking this with Sharon Carter. It wasn't my favorite. And then I watched the Mr. Sunday movies breakdown yeah. and they were like, mm-hmm. okay, I guess she's power broker. I kind of called it, but it's also not that exciting for her character. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they saved it for the end credit scene, right? Or was that not? well that was no no i mean they had they had her reveal she was power broker when she had that confrontation with carly when she ends up when she ends up shooting carly but But then the after credit scene it does because because that that's what's kind of actually what i thought was kind of cool about the power broker reveal is that when you watch the series knowing that she ends up being power broker for sure you see that she's trying to trick uh sam and bucky into like making her seem like she deserves a pardon and she's not this you know criminal who's on the run and so she's trying to get them to like present herself as that Mm. and then once she succeeds at that that's what i think that you know after credit scene was was like oh she got her way and that she got pardoned and now she's back working for the government but she's still evil so i I think that was just her play all along you know yeah they they opened up uh a couple opportunities that i saw throughout the show um one of them being the power broker and the other one i don't know the villain's name but the villain No, not Zemo. Uh, the guy that met up with, um, I'm forgetting the main villain's name. The French, John the French guy who's good at kicking? Yeah, yeah, the, the French guy that was... Uh, yeah, oh, good bad at truck. <laughs> there yeah, you bad go. Truck. There you <laughs> go. There was like this confrontation. Every time confrontation. he saw the screen, I'm just like, oh yeah, his superpower is kicking. <laughs> yeah. Mr. There was like a confrontation a uh, with him and Cap that it sort of left like open-ended where Cap had sort of you know, ran away with his shield, which was pretty sick. You guys remember that scene where he throws it out the window? And oh, then yeah, and then he catches it he goes as to it's like flipping fly around after in the air. It, it also mm-hmm. feels, yeah, weird, yeah, yeah, yeah. feels weird calling him Cap, too. I don't <laughs> know. I still got to get used to it. Yeah. Did you guys feel that was, uh, like, I remember when, you know, kind of everything had, had faded out and the situation was solved, per se, and mm-hmm. he's, like, talking to the senators or whatever they are, world leaders, and... After that conversation, he walks over to uh, the Winter Soldier, and I think someone calls him like Cap behind his back, and I was like, "Whoa!" Like that, it was like a it was like a paradigm shift mm-hmm. for me, you know? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. There is also that scene right at the end there, right as you know, Captain America f- finishes his big speech, and uh, Bucky calls him Cap right as he p- mm. pats him on the back, and they're walking off, walking like, as like you know, all the ambulances have shown up and stuff, and the battle's over and 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 i felt like that was a moment that made me tear up a little bit just because it felt so much like you know you could whether it's uh you know steve rogers or sam wilson being called cap and getting you know smacked in the back by bucky like it felt the same you know that the Mm -hmm. friendship energy in that scene felt the same to me so that was like that was a cool full circle yeah i was and i really like go ahead i I was watching uh a watch mojo thing on youtube yeah. shout out to youtube we'll probably reference it a lot <laughs> but they did like a 10 comparisons between uh, uh steve steve rogers cap 
and mm-hmm. one of them was the beginning of him and Falcon running. Like that very first scene, I forget what movie it is. I think it's the first Avenger, um, where they're yeah. running around the, um, is it Washington Monument or something like that? And he's oh, that's Winter, Winter, that's Winter Soldier. I think it's the second. That's Winter Soldier. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Winter Soldier. And yeah. And they made a, a a comparison to that of Bucky padding cap on the shoulder because Bucky was on his left or something like that. I was like, whoa! Oh, I would never yeah, make yeah, that yeah, comparison, yeah. you know? Yeah. Probably my favorite um, aspect of this show, like connecting all these small storylines that had begun, you know, back in 2010 with the first Avenger, all mm-hmm. the way up until now with the just kind of the legacy that Captain America has and like his friendships that he created both with Bucky and with Sam were so like true and honest it felt really satisfying to see them start to pay off and last after which after I'm assuming Cap's death because they never answer that question in the entire he's series at, he's in the moon he's in, he's at the moon yeah he's on the yeah, moon that, 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 did you guys notice that's that like moment? the conspiracy theory yeah yeah did, did you guys uh remember that moment where he where they first introduce uh, Sam with the suit on, and he breaks through the window with his wings, and, yeah. and it's the first like introduction of his suit, right? Because the last episode, episode uh-huh. five, you see him opening the the chest yeah, they from don't show it. Wakanda. Yeah, yeah. Wakanda. They don't show it, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and he's like, I forget what the guy says, but he's like, "Who are you?" And he's like, "I'm Captain America," and then he's like, "I thought Captain America was on the moon." Did you guys notice that? Yeah, oh yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> he did say that. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. So many. Yeah, uh, I think it. Go ahead. It has it has become like the you know, sort of the conspiracy theory of Captain America, kind of like oh Tupac's still alive, mm-hmm. sort of you know, that it, that that level of uh, it, it becomes a uh, internet meme. So it doesn't surprise me that the soldier that you know Sam Wilson's with in the f- very first episode. Um, I can't think of I can't think of what his name was. Torres. Uh, yeah, Torres. Um, Torres. He t- oh Torres. Mm-hmm. Torres. <laughs> I, th- I thought he said Torres. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but be yeah, Torres. He uh, he also mentions the whole moon thing, and then you have that random guy in uh. episode six also mentioning the moon thing. So that clearly kind of shows it as as a as a conspiracy theory that everybody has sort of adopted, you know. But who knows? I mean, I like Jacob's theory. Jake, I was talking to Jacob about this, but we were thinking that, okay, yeah, Captain America is probably dead. Jacob, what were you saying? Because something with the time travel, because he, he went back and he he stayed in a spot and he lived out his life, something like that. Right. <laughs> oh, we almost had to pause there because my audacity was like, not responding, but it's going now. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> this is classic uh, Martinez luck for you. Um, <laughs> we're live, man. This is raw right here. Yeah, Fuck it. it. <laughs> do it live. <laughs> Don't do it live. <laughs> okay. Restate your question because I was panicking for a slight second. There, Frank. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I was <laughs> I was basically saying um, what I – because I, I like what you said about thinking that, you know, Cap had died because he had chosen to go back in time and live out the rest of his years with Peggy. And since Peggy had already died in the timeline that we witnessed in the movies, we were assuming that, okay, Cap has – also yeah i mean wasn't it something like that the essential like aspect of the thought is uh, he got to complete his main like not story arc but desire as a character was to live was to live like from his first movie normal life of being just a good person because you think about it they didn't kill off tony stark until he finally was able to get over his selfishness put his life on the line, make the bigger play, as they say in the movies. Um, And that's when they completed his character arc. Uh Now, Caps was a little bit more off screen, but they still completed his character arc of being born to be a soldier, being turned into the greatest super soldier that ever lived, and then not knowing what to do with himself when there's no war, right? Because that was his big question. Like in Age of Ultron, Mm -hmm. when Scarlet Witch gets in their head, that's his nightmare is like what do i do now that there's no fight there's no war um so i think they kind of just like let him fade off probably as he would have wanted i think that's a perfect uh 
the perfect move because you know he he the first movie the first avenger he falls in love with peggy carter but like you said he's he's bred to be a soldier and uh, and then you have him going into ice until you know 2011 pretty much going landing in there in the 40s mm-hmm. and then being frozen for 70 years and i think with those 70 years he just he missed that whole opportunity right. to have a normal life since when he comes back he can't be with peggy and then you know she dies a few few years later and uh i think him going back in time at the end of endgame was his way of getting to live out those years that he missed when he was frozen and that's why he was a super old man in that last little scene and that's kind of why you ended endgame with him dancing with peggy he finally got that last dance that he talked about with her before crashing in the plane. So like you said, yeah, I think that his, his story is, is wrapped, you know, whether or not you want to say he's dead or alive or whatever. I, I, I hope personally that we move on from Steve Rogers, uh, in the MCU as Captain America. And we just, we, 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 we stick and we cement in with Sam Wilson Me too. as Captain America. And I say that because we had, we had about a decade of Steve Rogers as Captain America and what this show did with basically being six episode arc of a new Captain America taking the mantle. It feels so natural. And I ju- I'm just concerned as a person who knows that sometimes mm-hmm. it's all about the business with the movies. And I'm, mm-hmm. I, I yeah. still am worried that they bring back Steve Rogers in some way in, in a future project. You know, I'm not going to, you know, turn off the TV when that happens or anything, but I'm just saying I just don't think it needs to be done. I think his arc is perfectly told. Like you're you're saying I think kind of Captain America and Tony Stark were the two characters from the original Avengers that started the whole thing whose arc completely came right. to a close with Endgame, you know. Both Tony and S- and Steve got to have their ending. So I don't I don't want to see those characters come back. I think so. One of I don't them, know about you guys. Like the most interesting aspects of this show is that they used this series to address and answer a lot of like the fans qualms or questions they would have about sam taking up the mantle because we were probably asking the same thing sam why would you give up the shield cap gave that to you he trusted you with that will they make the character answer that same question basically addressing it in the universe and addressing it to us as fans. So I think that's kind of what they utilize this show for, mm-hmm. uh, to to like get us used to a new Captain America. Because I think we're all pretty aware that Chris Evans probably isn't coming back, even though we all love him and um, wouldn't mind seeing Chris Evans again. I, I feel like they're uh, using this series as a, as a way to say, okay, get used to it, get your anger out. And we're going to answer the questions that you might have. <laughs> um, but this is your Captain America now. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, when you say, like, get your anger out, when I first saw, I don't even remember, I don't even know his name. What was the character, the first Captain America that came in this series? What's his name? The white oh, guy. Oh, uh, John, John Walker. Walker. John Walker, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he had, like, the full suit on and the the shield. The helmet like, on? I, my stomach was turning. It was turning. I don't. I couldn't you even like handle it. I was like, they did not. Because again, I came in blind, you know, and I was like, they would not do this. Like, there's no way, you know. Yeah. And then they, they. I mean, man, I love, I love the writers. I love filmmaking. I mean, they, they kind of like, they're building this character up, and you're, you're like fighting it, and then you're like, okay, you know, for like an episode, you're like, uh, maybe he's, maybe maybe he's good maybe he's not and then you know a couple episodes go go by and you're like this guy is is you know spiraling spiraling yeah and you're like get that shield off of him you know (laughs) i just i love that um and and to segue you know what do you think i mean again i don't i haven't read the comics but what do you think uh is next for for john walker for quote unquote u.s agent right i mean he was a villain for this series up until maybe that last the episode, last episode. <laughs> where he sort yeah. of puts, you know, the uh, civilians over his, like, vengeance, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Which is funny, right? Because he 
straight up murder. Yeah, that somebody. is. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was strange. I really <laughs> thought that, I really thought that he was gonna go for Carly and ignore the, uh, ignore the 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 bus. I mean, the car full of people. And I yeah. think in mm-hmm. in hindsight, I think he could have ignored that bus of people, and nothing would have changed because what happens is he goes <laughs> for the he goes for the bus of people, and he, he's pulling it back. You know, he's holding on to it, and then he gets attacked by a few. You know. Uh, flag smashing s- super soldiers and they yeah. beat them up and they knock them off and they all fall down and then the car immediately starts to go crash again so his his heroic effort was pretty much it really just shook the car up pointless right? <laughs> it, because sam sam still comes in swoops in captain america and he uses his you know his mm-hmm, booster wings mm-hmm. to push the car up so in reality it was just i i really thought he still could have gone for carly and you know stayed a bad guy but i find it interesting that them trying to show him as a good guy right at the end of the series yeah. with the whole U.S. agent reveal because yeah. I'm pretty sure that U.S. agent is uh, a bad guy in the comics. Yeah, he is, and, yeah. and I'm pretty sure he, he... He's like all the bad parts yeah, of he's Captain like all, America. And, and he's like... Um, you know, I'm pretty sure he's... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some issues where he's doing missions for, you know, the Hydra sector that's located in the united states you know like he's basically a united states hydra agent that that's kind of the vibe i get from him just with the whole with the with the red on black suit you know do we do you guys know anything about that lady that kind of came in and like sat between uh john walker and his wife and then yeah like introduced him was like here's my card and then there was nothing on it i i know nothing about her I gotta ask you a question though, right? Okay, great. Did you realize that that's a huge guest star? Did you did you realize that that was a huge guest appearance? Huge guest appearance. Huge guest appearance. No, I couldn't even name her. So okay, no. So that's that's Julia Louis Dreyfus, and she is the star. She was the female, like the funny female of Seinfeld. You know, she was ah, okay. Pretty much why that she she's she's a good chunk of why that show's hilarious Got you. because she's. She's like has the female comedic uh, viewpoint in the show, and she's really good at it. And then she was also played the vice president on the HBO television show Veep, which ran for seven seasons. And I watched that phenomenal show. She's she's very funny, and they kind of, you know, the whole shtick she was doing of like, oh, you know, my name's Val, don't call me yeah. Val, kind of thing. Yeah. That that that's <laughs> sort of, I I'm not gonna say that's the kind of character she played, and you know, her two famous shows. But I will say that that is right in her wheelhouse of it's kind of like her style effect and t- it, it's her style yeah like it's yeah. a new character okay. she's playing but it's still in the same comedic style that she's known for so I was I was loving that and th- I really think I don't know if a lot of people were loving that just because I don't know how many Marvel fans or Seinfeld fans but you know I thought it was really cool. Just a heads up, I'm gonna replace my camera battery, so the camera, the video might <laughs> flash for a second. Man. This is a podcast, all right? <laughs> and it, yeah, you, the yeah. face is goes, really man. just, you know, so Frank can look I mean, good. That's really the only reason when, why we just to get more clicks like, yeah. on the in the yeah. thumbnail. As soon as as soon as Sam went to the bathroom during the middle of an episode, it, all yeah. rules were thrown <laughs> out the window. <laughs> I remember yeah. that. Anything goes <laughs> now, you know. There goes some extra editing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me replace this oh, thing. Oh, you're good, man. So it doesn't just you're die. Good. So uh, let me see if another. Ryan, do you like Val? I, I what, what were your thoughts yeah. on Val as a character? Ryan. I thought it was a little. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, I got you. Okay. I thought it was a little forced. Um, I'm not sh- like. I, it might have just. She came in a little too hot for me. You know. And, yeah. like, that wasn't a situation, I think, where you introduce that character. I don't know. To me, that was one of, like, the points where I was, like, kind of taken aback. And maybe that's where they're going. Maybe they want to sort of put you in a weird, uh, uh, I guess, ha- like get a, get a weird vibe uh, going. But that situation of him being, like, fired, basically, as Captain America, being stripped of all his, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know, what, dishonorably discharged or whatever. And him having that conversation with his wife and then you throw in this character that's just like taking up the conversation and like sitting between him and his wife. It's like, I I mean, it's a superhero show, but also like there's a little bit of humanity to it. And like, to me, that was just overboard. I don't know. Maybe I'm cherry picking something, but what do you think? You know what? I, I, I like that you, that that's a problem you had with the show because I think 
it was only a problem because of the the gosh darn pandemic because what the gosh darn pandemic did <laughs> was that it, it it kept it kept black widow it kept black widow from being released in may of 2020 was and she introduced black widow in exactly she oh. was supposed to be introduced in that movie and it makes perfect sense to me because i'm thinking about it like this you got black widow which i know features a character who also has the super soldier serum. Mm-hmm. There's David David Harbour, the actor from Stranger Things. He's playing this basically a Russian Captain America called Red Guardian. And uh, if there's a super soldier featured in the Black Widow f- movie, I'm assuming her character introduction, Val, was tied to something to do with the super soldier or evil super soldiers. So it was supposed to have a different effect than just, oh my god, it's Julia Louis-Dreyfus from Seinfeld. It was supposed to be more than that. It was supposed to be like, oh my god, this is the evil super soldier lady from uh, Black Widow. You know, I think that was sort of supposed to be the the why her appearance in that scene was supposed to hit a little harder was because we were supposed to have already established her as a character in Black Widow. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. I also learned that on Mr. Sunday Movies. Yeah, shouts out. <laughs> well, I don't know if you saw like the the YouTube videos coming out in the last couple of days, but I think there's already starting to be talks of like Captain America four, you know, like the next yeah, step. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure if oh. like story planning or production has started, cool. but I'm assuming it'll be a full movie with Sam Wilson as Captain yeah, America. Yeah, so. Th- that kind of goes back to my point about that one villain that was introduced, but like nothing really came about it. They had like one battle scene, and then, you know, again, he threw the the shield out of the window and then like flew after it, which was super sick. Um, but that was the last we saw that villain, is what you're saying. I think. Well, I think he was there at the. Was that uh, the last? I think that was. Last I we think saw he the was villain. there when they were running through. Oh yeah, no, he got. He got blasted by uh, he got blasted by oh, Sharon. Oh, he died. What am I saying? Yeah. yeah. Oh my he got, god, he got I forgot about that. Talking about that truck. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah we're we're we're, st- we're still talking about Kiki dude. Yeah, Kiki dude, he got um he got absolutely he got blasted by the power breaker. Blasted by Sharon. Yeah, that's right. That's he right. He tried to Yeah, he tried to threaten Sharon Carter with a blackmail and she's like, ah, "I don't do blackmail." And then she just shoots him and then Carly <laughs> ends up shooting Sharon and yeah. you know, Sharon, you know, lays there with the slug in her in her I, stomach and I, then Sam comes in and won't fight Carly. And yeah. that was a big moment in the show to me. I, yep. I, I like that because I I don't think they ever made Carly rootable for. Like, you were never fully rooting for her. Like, you understood parts of where she was coming from. She was but understood, I think her but you character, weren't rooting for her. Yeah, that's perfectly You to weren't rooting it. for her. And I, and I think I think that was really uh, nailed in her last bit there, right before she gets shot by Sharon. And the fact that I really thought it looked like she was about to shoot Sam. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like I, I really, I, I could say, I, I could see that she was, and Sam was just, he was taking that position as Captain America's of, I don't want to hurt you right now because I agree with parts of what you're doing, and I think, I think your intentions mm-hmm. are good. But then I think at the very end, that's why Sharon, that's why Sharon is kind of like a cool two-way character in that she's both villain and good guy. Yeah. Well, when you think about the villains in all of the MCU. That's how they make such compelling and good villains. It's you don't hate everything about their purpose or their drive. Like even you know Thanos had points right, here. Yeah, there. yeah, no, completely um, agree. Like you draw parallels definitely between Thanos and Carly, I think. Um they sort of have this like idea that everyone like if you just told someone it like, "Oh, you know, world peace, like all resources uh, you know, there'd be plenty of resources for everyone, you know, and you hear yeah, that there, like there's with no Thanos. borders. Everybody's like, yeah, exactly. One, one uh, overpopulation is no longer an issue. And you're like, oh, OK, like yeah. uh, that, that's great, you know. But then you hear like the reasoning behind it and you're like, OK, maybe, you know, that's wrong. Um, I, I really liked that scene. I kind of want to go back to the scene where uh, Cap and Carly are, you know, I mean, they're fighting, but Cap isn't fighting back. I, I really uh that really reminded me of like the Steve Rogers Captain America, and and I really feel like they're they're making their own like Captain America. But I think that what they really showed is that Sam feels, you know, a lot of responsibility, and even I mean, I don't want to say he was more of like a jokey character before, but this was more of like a serious role. I think um, obviously you know a bigger role, 
but but I I don't I can't pinpoint it, but I definitely noticed like some some differences between his attitude, um, just in like previous series versus you know him in this series. You know, and, and mm-hmm. to to quote like him standing up and Carly's like fight me, and he's like, I think he says like I think he just says no, but it it I like remembered Cap like standing up and being like. Uh, I could do this all day. It was kind of like that Dude, same vibe, yeah. you know. That's what I got. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's the exa- I know I know the part you're talking about. Is he does have that same even though he he does you're right. He does just say no, you know. Mm-hmm. That's all he says to her, no. But the way he the way he gets up and the way they do the music and the way they shot it, it gives you that same Captain America feeling of, you know, he's got a stance that he's made and he's not he's not moving from it, you know. I I really it, Oh, sorry, Frank. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say, I really think it's it's Sam understanding finally, like, the responsibility that comes with wielding that shield, which is where John Walker mm. failed, you know? He didn't mm. fully understand the history and the responsibility of having that shield because John Walker wasn't a bad person. He had an incredible service record, and he was, you know, proven to be some like the best of the best in terms of uh a soldier but uh, he didn't fully understand like the depth and the the responsibility of what it means to both be a symbol and a leader um and i think it took a while for sam to fully understand that Mm. well how about that moment of john walker after he's like fully bludgeoned this uh i i forget the name of flag smasher flag smasher fully bludgeoned him to death in front of a whole crowd and then that Mm -hmm. scene of the camera panning up and him just like looking it's almost like he's looking down he's kind of he's low-key like twitching to me oh man wow yeah it's also because he just took the the serum so he's kind of bugging out yeah talking about like and and also the shot with the bloody shield ryan yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Where yeah, he, yeah. It's oh, the yeah. it's the end of episode four, I think. I think. Um, yeah, the end of it. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And you're like, wow. Yeah. I remember when I, I I saw that scene. I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Like we're getting into it now because before it was kind of <laughs> like a lot of storytelling and or story building. Yeah. Uh, but the action action was coming definitely. Yeah, and I I was a big fan of how after that episode four, you know, with him smashing the dude to pieces with the shield, I, I love how they went episode five just immediately starts out with him running away from it you know (laughs) yeah yeah. it i it's just it it's great when a show does that they end on such a cliffhanger and they don't waste any time they just go right into it that was one of my favorite that was one of my favorite action scenes was the was the opening action scene of episode five when they take the shield from john walker they like break his arm that was crazy that was that was was sweet yeah I like yeah, seeing Sam great. learning how to use his wings more in battle, too. That was really cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that looked <laughs> like know, it hurt so bad. <laughs> you know what I thought yeah, was really did. funny? Um, uh-huh. <laughs> I, I don't know. When they showed John Walker throwing it, throwing the shield. In like, oh, and like the Good Morning America TV clip? Yeah, and he had it, and yeah, he, yeah. he had it all down. I was like, whoa. Like, I thought only Cap sort of had that ability, you know, to like the perfectly balanced shield and him – you know, I don't know, being a super soldier or whatever. Then you see yeah. uh, Walker doing it, and then at, uh, I think it's episode five, close to the end of it is, episode yeah. five. Yeah, they're throwing it around him, with each other. Sam, Sam and, Bucky. and Bucky are just, like, tossing it like nothing. And I'm like, okay, like it's frisbee. I guess it's like they're playing frisbee. I guess it's super easy, you know? <laughs> well, the and montage was pretty sick, too. Yeah, the montage was great. But I thought it was funny how they did that, and then... They showed uh, Sam, like, struggling to figure it out after they had just shown him tossing it like nothing with Bucky. Did you guys Did you guys see okay. that? Okay, now that that was – I think there were some changes to the show with the pandemic happening. More than just, like, the whole, you know, Julia Louis-Dreyfus Val cameo being – supposed to be in her second appearance or whatever. Besides that, like, I think there were scenes that were rearranged and things were put in other places. You know, I th- there, there's a there's a chance that the scene you're talking about, how they're just casually throwing the yeah. shield around. Yeah. There's a chance that originally that scene came after the montage. You know, the montage of him learning how to like use the montage it, right? of, of him, him learning how to, to use it. Cat, basically, exactly. Like hmm. there's th- I don't know, because I, I was rewatching the show today. It's a possibility because it didn't make sense. I know. 
yeah, I noticed that that was a little weird. But then at the same time, justifying it, trying to explain it without using that excuse of, oh, you know, scenes moving around or whatever. I do think there is something to be said about the fact that with Bucky and Sam, when they're just throwing the shield around, bouncing it off the trees, they're not doing any, like, special moves. They're just... They're just throwing it and bouncing it off objects. But when you cut to the montage of him practicing with the shield, you do see him failing with more elite moves, you know, whether it's f- trying to flip it mm-hmm. or, mm-hmm. you know, to catch throwing it. it hard. Yeah, trying to catch it in a higher angle. I don't know. It felt like it felt you could look at it from either way. You could look at it from, okay, this scene was supposed to go before this one, or you could explain <laughs> it to yourself. I really think you could go either way. Cause yeah. I was trying to justify it with myself today being like, okay, he's kind of doing a flip there. So maybe that's why he failed. <laughs> Frank know. did it. But I do know what you're talking about. Did it make you cry? Uh, when they have their kind of like bro moment therapy session and Sam gets through to Bucky. Like if you want to make this change, do the work, you know, you can't just cross people off this list. You're, you're avenging. Yeah. You're not healing yourself. Do the work. <laughs> are you talking about the scene where, they, where they're where they talking and they're throwing the shield, mm-hmm. or are you talking about where they're leg to leg? No, that one was funny, but... Yeah, that one was funny. Okay, I was going to say, yeah, 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 yeah. That one was, that one was funny. Getting nice and close. Um, yeah. Fan theories. You know what? The, the, scenes that, the scenes that really got me emotional, you know, there were a couple Bucky and Sam moments, like I said, when, when Bucky calls him Cap at the very end, but... I think the most emotional scenes for me, I don't know about you guys, were definitely the Isaiah Bradley parts. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. You know, those are heavy. Well, especially that that last scene. I think it's the last scene in the the film, where Sam shows him like the memorial for yeah, Isaiah exactly. Bradley. Yeah, that that, that part I was ooh, I was man. shedding some real tears for. Dude. Yeah, that was that, tough. That was like, whew. and it it just there's something about the way they did it with where the world is at right now that just made yeah, it exactly feel even more emotional because it, it it almost felt as if like. I don't know. I I really bought the fact that there was a black Captain America that was uh, completely swept under the rug. You know, hmm. there it just it just seemed seemed to be like because when when I think of the MCU, I really think of it as just this whole universe that just has. You know, we o- we've only seen so much of it because there's only so many movies or TV shows or whatever. But I just love to think of it as completely fully lived in, in that it's a universe just like ours, and that there's been you know 365 days a year for however many years or whatever and i just i just found it so believable to think about a black captain america after steve rogers is frozen in ice you know doing these crazy missions for the government and just kicking ass and then just getting everything stripped away from him because swept under the rug basically because he's the only like the same thing might have happened with Steve, but not in the way that it happened to Isaiah Bradley. You know. Well, the story because the story was that they tried to re-engineer it, right? Or they tried to create yeah, they it tried again. To, yeah, yeah. Because you imagine, like, what if Steve doesn't go into the ice and he continues to serve missions as Captain America? There's mm-hmm. probably a scenario where they take his blood and start doing experiments on him. Mm-hmm. But the fact that he was, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, white American, he already had had his spot. And I guess time in the spotlight at the very beginning of being Captain America, where they were parading him as round as like the mascot for the World War Two, and then you fast forward to what they did to Isaiah Bradley, and they just went, they 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 completely stripped away the, you know, the symbolness of it, you know, mm-hmm. having it be uh, something that people look up to and uh, think of and are shown, and they just like like you said, swept under the rug. They they just hit it, and I f- I felt like that was just so believable and it just i don't know it just it hit me in a time that was uh, yeah it had me crying man i love hollywood man i love hollywood (laughs) i (laughs) i mean they gave the the specific example too like isaiah bradley did basically the same thing that cap did by breaking out prisoners of war and bringing them back to camp but he got punished for it he got exactly yeah exactly and not only that but we don't even we go through over a decade this is like stepping out of the fake reality and stepping into reality. Like we've 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 gone through over a decade of movies and we're just now finally learning about Black Captain America. It just yeah. That that's what made it also hit really hard and that I was just like, wow, this is seriously representing the real world because do you think the they real planned w- that? No, I don't. I just think that's the real world. Like it's just like yeah. 
Yeah. It's it's something where, uh, <laughs> yeah, it it hit me so I was like, wow, why haven't they? You know, we've had 13 years of Marvel movies, and they're just now mentioning a Black Captain America. And I was just like, well, that's because they're reflecting the real world that we're living in right now. That's what I was saying and earlier too. It goes yeah, goes back to that same point, answering like our yeah. angers or fear or questions. You know, we feel like Captain America was swept under the rug, or like Isaiah Bradley, like it feels real almost. Mm-hmm. I think that's pretty big. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what do you guys think about? So this is what I was thinking the other day. Like, okay, WandaVision was I think the first uh, Marvel TV show or movie post the blip, right? Or post blip fix. Let me put it that way. No, 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 no. Uh, Spider-Man Far From Home was. Okay, true. That's true. Yeah. The first one to feel the effects of it, really. That one wasn't too bad in terms of it. It was just more of like, oh, hey, high schoolers are now, or your older brother is now your younger sister, like stuff like that. That's kind of how they entered, introduced Brad it. Brad is hot now. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then WandaVision kind of introduced like, it was the the post of that, but it yeah. was kind of in its own world. Now this one, right, Falcon and the Winter yeah. Soldier was literally, you know, the aftermath. I mean, it's starting to introduce, you know, this new age of, of Marvel, I think. You know, we're like the post blip. We're going to see a lot of different storylines surrounding it. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? Yeah, I uh, that I'm happy you mentioned that because it makes me want to see like a small television series just similar to what we got but more grounded in real world and uh you you could even do it i mean this sounds kind of wild but i'm imagining like an mcu tv series without any superheroes i was just about to say that's be and that's because now that we we had this whole oh good point you know five half the blip happens and you you know you go for five years five years with mm-hmm. half the population on the earth. I mean, that right yeah. there is five seasons. That's five seasons of a TV show right there. Because I want to know like what <laughs> the heck was going on. And I want to I want to like I want some more justification and background for the flag smashers. Cuz right. you got the flag smashers out here who are inspired by the blip and they're like, "Oh, no borders, you know, all you know, all one people, yeah. one earth, all that kind of stuff." And that kind of makes sense to me when I imagine if I was, you know, sitting right here and half the population disappeared right now, there would just be so much kind of free stuff to take. Yeah. You know? Cuz you th- you think about every th- everything that's consumed and taken and, you know, not available just because of how big our population is and you slice that in half and now suddenly I can go live in Justin Bieber's mansion, you know? So <laughs> calm down, Thanos. It's <laughs> it <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I I just but I just think there's so much interesting stuff there and that's where I want to see them go with more series i mean it, it might not happen they could just never really show on camera what happened during the blip but i think that would be a a really cool little little thing to explore even like a full um almost like the office style uh sick even like a sitcom <laughs> of people yeah. during the blip i mean you could you could do it so many ways <laughs> you could you you could you could approach it comedically you could approach it dramatically you could promote you could you know you could still keep it action packed and just you know see the effects of how people react when you know half the people go missing and all this stuff becomes available you know what kind of violence erupts what sort of you know new societies new groups and i just think there's so much so much stuff to explore in in the idea that half the population goes away at the snap of a finger like Do that right there is just so fascinating to me the hawkeye hawkeye is getting his own series now right mm-hmm. or yeah with standalone with, with yeah it's going to be called i can't think of what it's called right now it's but i know it's going to feature it's just called hawkeye yeah, okay it's got Frank's I know it's gonna have, yeah thanks jacob for remembering i was gonna you know i obviously <laughs> was gonna, i wasn't gonna i wasn't gonna forget her or anything i was gonna you know she's gonna she's gonna play uh hawkeye's daughter who's uh also wicked with a bow of course you know? yeah uh, do you? I I, ho- I wonder if they're gonna like introduce uh, Hawkeye during the blip time. I don't know. Maybe do some backstory on that, or maybe they'll have something along those lines because he oh, sort of had I a weird 
Yeah, the arc. Ronin thing. Yeah, him him going him going and going all crazy with the with the samurai sword. He went people full up, like vigilante, people. stuff yeah. like that. He went just killing bad yeah. people, murdering minorities. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, that's one way you could put it. You know, that with, with that scene, that scene, and you know, wherever it was. Uh, in uh, Japan, with the, with the rain falling, the Yakuza, Japan, like rain falling in Japan. The Yakuza, yeah, uh, yeah. I think I'm I'm almost. I mean, I don't see why they wouldn't do this. Maybe it's too obvious. That's why they don't do it. But I can see them doing flashback scenes in the Hawkeye series with him in Japan, being Ronin, being a samurai. You know, because that was something that could be cool. And I noticed this show was a little more violent. It, I felt like Win- Falcon and Winter Soldier had more violent moments than what I've seen in most MCU movies. Mm. Um, I don't know if I noticed there was that. A, maybe I'm not. I feel like there was a stab scene that I noticed that was like kind of more brutal than others. But um, well, so fun the, little thing. The, the murder was pretty was pretty brutal. Oh, yeah, the murder was. That yeah, was the murder pretty, was yeah, you're brutal. right. And then um, <laughs> speaking about, there was a line. It was kind of, kind of a throwaway line, but it was in episode two when... Um, Bucky and uh, Sam fall off the trucks that are moving, and then they're just you know walking. They're walking along the road, and John Walker and uh, Lamar come up in the in the army jeep and are trying to give him a ride or whatever. And Bucky says like, "Oh, he compares you know John Walker to Steve Rogers in that. Oh, you've never you know jumped on a grenade or whatever." <laughs> and and then John Walker's like, "Yeah, I've actually." He says something like, "Yeah, I've, I've jumped on like four grenades." He's like. <laughs> It's this it's this little trick I do with my helmet and like <laughs> he starts to explain it and then he just stops explaining it and I was just wondering what you guys thought like since he didn't explain what the trick was <laughs> I had two I had two ideas there's no for what trick, the trick was. but okay go ahead <laughs> Here's 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 my thoughts either he's um he sees the grenade on the ground and he somehow is able to somersault his way to where his head the top of his helmet on his head is perfectly over the grenade <laughs> as it explodes and it takes the impact and he goes flying like a little, you know, like a gymnast yeah. and he lands on his feet. Or is he seeing the grenade and instead of cartwheeling, he's immediately removing his helmet and sort of leaping at the grenade and kind of putting the helmet over the grenade as if it's like a, a, a seal, you know? Like he, he's, he's, I he's think that's the, the vibe, helmet. dude. I, I, I most likely go with that goes <laughs> off. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because when I first when I first watched the the episode, I immediately thought of the somersault thing, uh, or the or the cartwheel, whatever you want to call it. Him flipping on his head and perfectly being right above it as it blows up. But the whole helmet over the grenade makes way more sense. Yeah, that sounds well, like a, yeah. I mean, a the Looney idea was skit. Yeah, yeah, and it does. A, a grenade is like a bunch of shrapnel and like explosives. Yeah. So even if you're right on top everywhere. of it, it would definitely kill people yeah. to the side. Like you're not saving <laughs> mu- many people. <laughs> yeah, you you need the round shape to contain all the shrapnel just going everywhere. For well, sure. Well, listen. Uh, do you guys have anything else for Falcon and the Winter Soldier? No, Jacob. It was pretty satisfying. I'm I'm excited yeah. for where it's and going. And I thought next. it was. Yeah, I thought it was the perfect show that did what it wanted to do, and that was to set out and set up a new Captain America. And boom, it nailed it. I would have liked to see Bucky go on a second date, not going to lie. They teased it. Yeah, honestly, I will say that that was was a little... I I really thought that first episode kind of led me in the wrong direction, I will say, because with that whole date thing, and I I thought we were going... I thought we were going to continue to dive into that, more kind of the therapy date thing that Bucky had going but that quickly dropped off in the first episode or two so True. Uh, I didn't I didn't wasn't bothered by it, you know I don't want to see Bucky slow down by you know dates and therapy when he should be out using that middle arm but you know. <laughs> I guess I'm just hoping they get more comfortable tying in like multiple properties into single series so how they brought in like characters from Wakanda how they brought in mm-hmm. you know Zemo Sharon they brought in uh, even Rhodey was in the second oh, was episode. was in the first, the first episode, episode, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just hope those, like, walls start to fall down and it's not like, you know, we have to wait for the big team-up movie for, just to see all the characters together. Yeah, yeah. I I, uh, I would like to see them, yeah, using, taking advantage of the characters as if it is a real comic book. What do you, uh, what do you all think is going to happen with uh, 
I think they've announced a Black Panther 2, or they said they have plans for they it. They did. Yeah. So what, what do you Panther think, two, uh, yeah. how do you think they're going to go about that? And I don't know is a perfectly fine answer, because that would be mine. <laughs> well, I've, I've, I've heard his sister, Shuri, I think is her name is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've heard that Shuri is going to potentially become the new Black Panther. Oh, right on. Or they they might even just be like abandoning the title of Black Panther, yeah, but yeah. still exploring the Black Panther characters. Like I know Kevin Feige said specifically they're not going to recast I Black remember Panther that too. Yeah, um, you know I do think it'd be smart to recast it eventually with somebody that could do it justice. Um, I even heard some of my my coworkers were saying that we'd be fine seeing Michael B. Jordan just like recast as <laughs> black panther even oh, though he yeah. played low Killmonger key, already yeah, yeah. low key i think he he would do great dude here's what i'm saying i don't see why you just can't like w- we're working with time travel in this in this <laughs> mcu like well, the rules yeah. really don't apply necessarily so i don't see why you can't bring back killmonger to life true i think i think there's a way to in do an it. alternate universe man he comes because in he's I really good think yeah, and but uh, but even then, I really liked his message as a villain. You know, I I I like I liked what he was about, and I liked his final scene when he you know he takes the blade out from himself, and he he kind of he kind of kills himself in a way because he doesn't want to be a captive, and yeah, uh, and yeah, I just thought it was a real, very, very well done death scene, and I think there is. Like I said, when you're dealing with a universe where time travel can be invented by Tony Stark in the first, you know, quarter of your movie, you can come <laughs> up with a way in to bring ten back minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can Shit. come back you can come up with a way to bring back uh, Killmonger and make him make him potentially the new Black Panther, if not some other title that is in a way the new Black Panther, you know. That's funny you mentioned the Tony Stark scene. I thought that w- that scene was so funny and any like review I read online was like, "How are we overlooking this? Like, this is <laughs> so big. I mean, come on. It's. <laughs> I think it's like so uh, it's, it's almost like un- it's like it's unrealistic even for Marvel. You know, like mm-hmm. you just have him figure it out within one night, and he's like, "I still have time travel." <laughs> what? <laughs> well, on. there's certain things in those movies that you just have to accept. You, just, you yeah, you yeah. gotta go along with it. Yeah. You know? Otherwise, you'll get left behind. Well, I think yeah. they were planting seeds too. Like, they had to have planted, you know, I mean, everyone knew Ant-Man wasn't in Infinity War, so, and everyone True. sort of figured out the theory was that he was going to come back from thing. the quantum realm, and then they were yeah. going to figure it out somehow. Um, yeah. So, it wasn't like a shock, but it was kind of <laughs> abrupt, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, we're time traveling now, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're in those space suits and stuff, and it's like, whoa, I really, <laughs> damn, that moved quickly. <laughs> Yeah, and even Hulk had one. Did you see that the, apparently there's a six-hour version of Endgame that they can release? Really? Yeah. They, like a Snyder oh Cut book for Endgame. <laughs> six hours? Yeah. That Holy would be... Jeez. Wow. I would assume so much footage was cut from the movie anyways. Yeah, but I'm wondering how much... Uh, like, what what... The parts that get cut that are finished CGI, and then the parts that get cut that aren't finished CGI. True. You know, because I, I I bet there's a I bet there's a version that they could do where they could probably release like a four hour version that was didn't cost much more money to do because you know the hour on the cutting room floor was almost completely rendered. Uh, but the six hour version, you know, if there's actually three hours of footage that was cut, then there's no way that it's all you know ready to go uh so that would definitely be really expensive but i think it'd be cool and it'd probably be the way that they would beat avatar for you know the most box office because avatar was it you jacob that was telling me that avatar was re-released somewhere uh a while like a few months ago and it and it ended up making enough money to pass endgame again for the most box office yeah what they'll do is they'll re-release it in like china or a certain other country just to say like Avatar's back in theaters for a limited time. Go see it again. And technically, yeah. it still counts towards their box office sales. So um, they passed 
Endgame up once again. That's rigged. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's so dumb. I know, Are you kidding so rigged, me? Dude. James Cameron. So stupid. He's a money hog. That movie's <laughs> been out for like 10 years now. 12 Are you years. kidding me? Also, when are they coming out with a new years. Avatar, man? I thought the Avatar two was coming out with like within like three years. I think you know what? I think Avatar two was actually supposed to come out this year, but it it got pushed back because you know they have pandemic. Avatar two through five planned out already. Yeah, they do. Yeah, two, well, three, we'll all four, be four, dead five. before that happens. <laughs> four so. movies. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just wild to me to think about like how you're gonna make what a is, movie in two thousand nine and then you, expect us to care about four more sequels <laughs> coming out. Well, James Cameron later. is like, what is he? He's got to be like 60 right now. I mean, he's, he's going to die. Uh, yeah, he's, he's old, going he's like to die. Now. Like, what is he doing? If he wants to make these films, he's got to get going. I'm going to send him this video clip. Dude, you're going to die. <laughs> yeah. send the him movies. I can't be the first to say it. I mean, this can't be an unpopular opinion. No, it's true. Oh, no, it's definitely not. A, I mean, I've, I've heard this opinion on most of the videos I've watched talking about the announcement of four more Avatar movies. Uh, everybody scratches their head and is saying, like, is James Cameron going to be directing from a wheelchair by the by the fifth movie? Because like, <laughs> that's going to take a long time. That's the whole joke. There's like a, a Gus Johnson and Jack's film skit. <laughs> it's like James Cameron. Oh, yeah, I think I saw that. Oh, releasing yeah, yeah. movies like all the way into his senile age. <laughs> Let me tell you this: Avatar Seven is like a. It's gonna blow your mind. He's in a wheelchair. Pulls like a, like a Prometheus, where he's like, he's in like cryo sleep, and they pull him out when they're going oh, to a new yeah, planet yeah, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Side note: These oh. iced tea white claws <gasps> are fire. You got the iced tea white claws. Yeah, Jacob dude. has the white claws. Oh my iced tea god! White claws. I already crushed the mango one. And dude, shit is delicious. Wow, I am so jealous. I'm over here. So, oh God, this is going to be embarrassing. I have a ruby grapefruit going on right now. Oh, <laughs> dude. Right. Jacob, can you can you kind of give us a feeling what the difference is? Like, what, what, what about are you tasting right now? What are you feeling? feeling? So picture this. You're 12, right? You're going to visit your grandma. It's a hot summer day, and your parents dropped you off because they have to go run some errands. So you're just hanging out at grandma's house. You go to the garage fridge and you open it up. There's a cold, brisk iced tea. Picture that first sip, but it gets you fucked up. Wow, dude, it's, it's delicious. Damn, dude, that's wow. So good. That oh my God. hit home, man. Like, wow, that was a beautiful description. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's got like nostalgia mixed in with like new vibes. It's it's pretty flavorful, more than just a normal white claw. Jacob, did stopped. you know? Did you know there is a there's a couple new versions coming out. There is a third variety pack, and they're coming out with what's called a white claw surge, which is like eight percent. Yeah, eight percent alcohol. Not for me, dog. Not for me. <laughs> I stopped drinking seltzers for like eight months because last July I had a, a little cousin weekend and. I ended up drinking probably like eight to ten Trulies. And <laughs> been, Frank knows, there, Frank knows that, there. man. Frank's Let's been just there. say it didn't pay off well the next day. <laughs> oh, I've been scarred brother. from seltzers ever since. <laughs> but then I was like, hey, I'll come in the pod soon. I'll get some more White Claws. And then I've been drinking them. They're pretty good. Well, Frank, Frank went through a phase where something like that happened to him. And, I mean, feel free to chime in here. I'm, I don't want to tell your life story, but... <laughs> He had a phase where he would only tackle like half a claw for like it was maybe like four weeks. He's like, I just I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I I had the New Year's the New Year's Eve. Uh, I had about eight claws in like an hour. I remember this story. It was and, extremely uh, impressive. It I I did also I really, it, it got away from me, dude. It really also got like away from me. <laughs> extremely unwarranted, you know. Like we weren't even yeah. <laughs> We weren't even drinking the hard. Three of us. <laughs> yeah, it was just the three he of us just sitting on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> it was the three of us sitting on the couch. We with, were trying to play uh, Monopoly, get right? Smart. Yo, yeah, yeah, we're, get we're smart. We're watching Get Monopoly. Smart, and we're trying to play Monopoly. <laughs> and then, I mean, how could I be expected to focus on a movie and a board game when I'm eight class D? Especially Get no Smart. Way. Man. True. He's that one friend that takes every get together to 11. <laughs> we're hanging well, that out. time that time well. i mean i was really impressed i was i was honestly yeah, that, really that impressed. time i did 
uh, yeah, I I don't always take it to an 11, but that time I did for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, well, this has been an hour long, so do you guys want to close it out right here? Um, yeah, let's do it. Sure. Okay, so episode 68, is that 68. right? 68. 68. Yeah, 68. Thank yeah. you so much, Jacob, for coming on. Yeah, thank you, you have for been of course, of course. a true listener and also a true guest. Uh, your yes. analysis of Falcon and the Winter Soldier was great, and uh, as always, we appreciate we appreciate you, man. So no. thank you so Super much for excited. coming on. So, yeah, thank you for being our first virtual guest, and yeah. we look forward to having you on as a guest when we can all do this in person and get a little bit weirder with it. For Absolutely. sure, I'm excited. We'll run it back. Right. We'll run it back. We'll make sure you yeah. get eight and you again. Okay. I'll bring the iced tea white claws. All right. Oh, yeah. Dude, let's do Thank it. you, everyone, right, so. for li- listening. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. You guys know the deal. Thank you so much. We love you. Cheers up, boys. Episode 68. Peace out. Cheers up. Cheers. All right. Later, everybody. Wait, wait, wait.